There are a few things that can cause a farmer more headaches and frustration than spray drift. Here to help us understand spray drift and, and how it happens, how maybe we might control it, is Troy Kolb from Capstan Ag Systems. Troy, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Good. Talk to us a little bit. First of all, why is this such a problem for, for our agriculturalists? What, what are the problems that happens from drift? Well, there's two things that are problems with drift. One is if you have spray drift out there, you're not getting your chemical where you want it. You're not getting weed control, you're not getting insect control and so forth. The second problem is if it's not going where you want it, it's going where you don't want it. And that gets into litigation, drift right. onto neighbors, right. crop damage, and, and damage to the environment and so forth. So those are the two features that are most critical. Talk to me a bit about the mechanics of drift. Why does it happen? Uh, drift is a function of pressure. And depending on what spray tips you select, if you're running too high a pressure, which sometimes are related with too fast of speeds, or wrong tip size, high pressures cause driftable fines, and those driftable fines can range up to 30% on certain tips at certain pressures, which means a third of your product is either evaporating or moving off target. And, and that's why drift is such a concern and can be such a problem. And when you say drift fines, those are certain size of those droplets, they get so small, they're the, just The more droplets are, are sized based on microns, and that's what okay. we consider their, their diameter and droplets that are smaller than 200 microns are considered driftable fines. And those are droplets that are going to evaporate up in the air or move off target and not get down to the, the ground or the, the weeds and, and pests that we're trying to target that product for. Okay. Now you talk about uh, some of these different elements. Let's talk, I guess, first for, for a second about the tips here. Okay. There are different types of tips out there. Talk to us about some of the different options and, and how you select the right tip. There's different tips out there, different tip types, different tip manufacturers. Some of your basic tips are a flat fan tip, which basically is just an orifice, depending on what pressure you run through there, dictates what droplet size. We also have other tips that have a pre-orifice, in which actually control your droplet size, give you a little coarser droplets, minimize your drift will finds. And then we have air induction tips, which we actually suck air into the flow through the tip and then train air into the droplets, which also helps increase your droplet size and your droplet spectrum to minimize those driftable fines. Now, the other, other side of this that causes a lot of the trouble is, is our pressure regulators, which we use as you speed up and slow down. How, but those, those have limitations to them. Correct. Conventional rate controllers as we know it help maintain that we get the target rate applied across the boom based on what speed. Well, when we had early machines that were all constant speed, the rate controllers didn't have to do a lot of pressure changing. But now we've got machines such as this that can range anywhere from four to 24 miles an hour and spray through that whole speed range. Well, with conventional rate controllers, as you go through that speed range, your pressure may fluctuate from 15 PSI to 60 PSI or better, at which point at low pressure, you get nice coarse droplets to minimize your driftable fines. But at the high speeds, high pressures, that's where you get those driftable fines and those problems start occurring with drift. And I guess part of the problem too, is you said some of these, uh, the drop size, you almost want the smaller drops for better coverage, but that, that the smaller you get, the closer you get to drift. There, there's a trade-off there between smaller drops, you get more droplets out of your product and you get better coverage. But if you get too small, then you start getting those driftable fines and you lose your effectiveness because they're evaporating and moving off target. By the same token, if you get too coarse, then you're not getting the coverage you're after. So the ideal situation is you can be able to control your rate and also control your pressure as two independent variables. So I guess the kind of to wrap this up, the, the, the essential things for the farmer rancher to keep in mind is, is one, know your product, know the size you need to be putting out. Correct. And then two, to, to get the best equipment you can and manage it appropriately for the field, for the speed. Uh, it, it's not, this isn't good flat North Dakota here, this is Oklahoma, rough it's fields, Oklahoma, a lot of variation. Field. Correct. And, and the idea deal is, you know, invest in technology that makes sense for your size of farm, select the right tips that work for you. All right. Troy, we appreciate your time so much today. It's been very Thank informative. You.